As an Irishman, when people ask me for advice on travelling in Ireland, my response is generally always the same. Once you arrive into Dublin Airport, just get as far west as you possibly can. Today, we're just about as far west as you possibly can go, and we're about to explore the spectacular wild Atlantic coast of County Mayo. First things first, when traveling in Ireland, it is important to have some sort of vehicle to get around in. There are various car rental services at Dublin Airport, but we would recommend booking well in advance as this is a very popular way for travelers to get around here and during peak season rental cars are in high demand. The other main way of exploring Ireland is by renting a camper van for the duration of your trip. You will need to get either a car or a camper van as you just can't see the best of this country, especially the wide Atlantic way, by using Using public transport. By the way, we are Mark and Asia, and this is our Something to Remember YouTube channel. If you haven't seen our previous videos about Donegal and Irish culture, be sure to check them out after this video. Luckily for us, Mark is from Donegal, and we had the option of driving his family car to start our adventures in Mayo. In our itinerary, we are going to be heading from north to south, but of course, you can do this with the opposite direction if that fits your plans better. Our first stop was in what is probably the most famous stop along Mayo's wild Atlantic coast, Dunbrish just sea stack at Downpatrick Head. As it is quite a well-known place, we had seen loads of pictures and videos of this natural landmark, but we were stunned at how much better it is in person. I thought when I looked at the pictures, oh, it's alright, but when we got here, I'm just blown away, it's so beautiful. Dunbrishja and the surrounding cliffs were formed around 350 million years ago. There are many theories on how the sea stack was formed, but it is widely accepted that an arch leading to the rock collapsed during very rough sea conditions in 1393. We had this thing in China that we hated fences and we, we seen like natural attractions that he had these big fences up and we hated it. But now that I'm standing here at the edge of the cliff in Ireland, I feel like Maybe fences are a good idea. As well as the spectacular sight of the sea stack right in front of you, the surrounding rugged coastline is stunning too. And it was a dream start to our adventures in Mayo. No parking fees, no admission fees, no ugly fences blocking the view. Downpatrick Head is definitely our cup of tea. We then headed west along the scenic coastal road and soon arrived at the Kaja Fields, the world's most extensive Stone Age monument. These stone walled fields are the oldest known globally, dating back almost 6,000 years. A viewing platform on the edge of the 110 meter high cliff gives you stunning views of the aforementioned Downpatrick Head and Donegal's famous Sleeve League cliffs in the distance. The visitor centre at the Kaja Fields is only 5 euro to enter and is definitely worth a look around. By the time we arrived in Belmullet, we had worked up quite an appetite and we chose to stop off in Talbots for some pub food. And we were not disappointed. Try the roast beef, it was delicious. An interesting fact about Belmullet is that it's in the Gaeltacht region, which uh, means that their first language here would be Irish and all the signs. Uh, shop names, pub names, it'll all be in Irish, so it's nice to see. After a quick stop at Dunnam Ba, another coastal viewing point not far from Belmullet, we made our way to Porta Cloy Beach to get our hiking fix in for the day. In all honesty, this turned out to be a really simple hike, but we were blown away with the rewards along the way. Behind me is Porta Cloy Beach, we just parked the car beside the beach, and now we're going on a nice cliff walk around the coast here, so we're looking forward to that, should be nice. Trekking through the soft and craggy bogland, you are treated to gorgeous views of this rugged cliff face on the right hand side and as you get nearer the top another huge cliff face emerges on the left giving you 360 degree views of both cliffs the roaring Atlantic Ocean Porta Cloy Beach and one of the famous era signs that are dotted all around the Irish coast era means Ireland in the Irish language and during World War II over 80 of these signs were dotted all along the Irish coastline to warn bombers that they were entering a neutral country for us the experience we had on the Porta Cloy cliff walk perfectly encapsulates what the wide Atlantic way is all about it's not only about iconic locations like down Patrick head Schlieve League or the cliffs of Moher it is also about finding these kind of isolated places in the middle of nowhere with zero tourists and scenery that takes your breath away. And then there is this stunning beach and it's all in this 
purple flowers. So cool. Of course, you should definitely visit the main attractions, but make sure to leave some room for hidden gems like these on your itinerary. You will not regret it. No people. Welcome to Ireland. Another way of making your wide Atlantic adventure that bit more exciting is choosing off the beaten path accommodation as well. We are on the Wild Atlantic Way, one of the most rugged coastlines in the world, hence the name, and and that's where we are staying. Camping in Ireland can be a bit risky as there is the chance that you could be blown into the middle of the Atlantic during the night, but we actually got a really pleasant evening for it. We set up our tent at Rinrow Beach and even made it to the ocean for a quick dip in the morning. If you think the water must be cold in Ireland's choppy west coast, you would be absolutely right. But it was a great shock to the system to get us ready for another day's exploring. Just finished a successful night camping. That went uh, a lot more smoothly than expected, I think. And this is a great spot to camp, like a popular area, loads of camper vans, loads of tents. But at the same time, you can find your own little patch. So yeah, if you're coming to Mayo and Belmullet, Rinro Beach, definitely recommend checking it out for camping. As our fellow coffee lovers will attest, after a night's camping and a freezing ocean dip, Surely there was nothing we could be craving more than a nice strong coffee. And this is where we want to talk about Irish delis. We have proudly traveled far and wide and we can confirm that nowhere does delis and takeaway coffee quite like we do in Ireland. We stopped at this centre in the tiny town of Bangor Eris on the way to our next destination and this was exactly what we needed to recharge. I've just stopped the car along the side of the road because I just noticed something that has blown my mind about the Wild Atlantic Way sign. It says WA w in white on a blue sign and before i just thought it was like zigzags to uh like signal the cliffs or waves or something but it means wild atlantic way leave a comment and tell me i'm stupid if that's something that everybody knows but i was driving there and I, it was almost like i had a homer simpson epiphany moment what's an epiphany sudden realization of great truth <laughs> is a small island that has lots of smaller islands that lie just off its shore, the largest of which is Akil Island and that is where we are headed next. Even though it is an island, it is conveniently connected to the mainland by a swing bridge, so it's extremely easy and free to access. If you are planning any kind of a trip to Ireland, you will be aware that there is always the risk of experiencing some, shall we say, adverse weather conditions from time to time. The most important thing to remember is that there are always lots of things to do, even when it is a bit pissy outside, and that is where the Irish American whiskey distillery on Ackle Island comes in handy. This is one of very few Irish run, family owned whiskey distilleries and the only island whiskey distillery in Ireland. Run by the McKay brothers in memory of their late father and company founder, John McKay, Irish American whiskey gives you a real sense of what a family run business should feel like. We have visited quite a few distilleries before, including some more famous ones like Jameson and Bush Mills. But we can honestly say there was something much more authentic about this place and a stop here should definitely go on your Akil itinerary. Believe it or not, the lads at Irish American will actually take you on a complimentary tour of the distillery free of charge, but you shouldn't miss out on the chance to pick up a bottle of their Irish American whiskey or their Akil Island whiskey. If whiskey isn't really your thing, they also do gin and vodka there, so there really is something for everyone. One last thing, have you ever heard of the Irish alcohol called pochi? During the 17th century, when Ireland was unfortunately under British rule, the government tried to collect a tax on our beloved pochi. This wasn't an easy task, however, as people just hid the existence of pochi from them. Sometimes they would even hang the pochi and everything they used to make pochi off cliffs so that the authorities couldn't find them. So that really annoyed King Charles and in 1661 he made pochi illegal in Ireland. This was a part of a bigger effort to repress the Irish culture at the time. Even though it never completely went away as it was just simply homebrewed under the radar, believe it or not, pochi wasn't made legal in Ireland again until 1997. Nowadays there aren't that many brewers of Irish pochi but at Irish American they are really doing their best to keep it alive. So this is the pochi that we got at the Ackle Island Distillery, Irish American Whiskey Distillery and it's called the Bodan. It's Irish pochi, 60%, so we're gonna give it a go. Aren't we one? Yeah. If you really want to immerse yourself in Irish culture when you're on your trip here, get yourself a bottle of their Bodan pochi at the distillery. It's nice. It's a nice pochi. I've had some rough pochi before, but that's a nice pochi, which also probably makes it a dangerous pochi. 
but if you like partying, that's lovely. All right, time to get back to the sightseeing. And next up was a stop off at Tramore Sand Beach to take in the views of the towering Manon Cliffs. The wild Atlantic way is riddled with spectacular jagged cliffs like this, but we never get sick of seeing them. Menon cliffs actually appear in the background of some scenes in a very famous film that had huge success in 2022. So a lot of people don't know that a lot of the Banshees of Inishirin was actually shot on Akal Island and behind me here is one of those places. For example, it was here that uh, the boats came into the village and Colin Farrell, who plays Porik in the Banshees of Inishirin, gets punched by the cop and uh, he falls down just beside this wall you can see behind me here. So uh, we're going to try to get to another couple of places that had scenes of the Banshees of Inisherin. So I think it's quite interesting. If you haven't seen that movie, it divides opinion, but me and Asha really liked it. We have been trying not to talk about the weather too much in Ireland because we find it a fairly boring topic, but it is quite, it is quite funny at the minute because that video you just seen of me talking about the Banshees of Inisherin spots was taken about three minutes ago and now we can't even see outside the window. That is probably an outrageous view, but the fog has set in and we just can't see anything. But in two minutes it might be already here. So we're at the lake and as you can see the fog has set in, but uh, it's actually lifting away bit now. Oh, we can see the mountains. That's nice. Uh, if you've seen the Banshees of Inishirin movie, this is where the young fella says to the woman something along the lines of, Oh, I was just wanting to ask you something. A, a woman like you would never think about falling in love with a boy like me. Uh, something like that. And she goes... <laughs> and then if you've seen the movie, we all know what happens then. But uh, yeah, it's cleared up a wee bit now and we can see it. This is cool. We then tried to go catch a glimpse of Keem Bay, but... So down there is Keem Beach, one of the most famous beaches in Ireland. And uh, it's from there that you start to hike to Crone Cliffs. But obviously we can't do it today because we wouldn't see where we're going. We decided we would give Kim Bay another try the following morning. But for today, we did have time to squeeze in a mesmeric sunset at the north of the island. As the weather up there was completely different. The Dugort area of Akal is less populated and more remote than main hubs like Kiel, Kim and Sound, but where we were spending the night was also incredibly scenic. We had learned by now that no matter where you go on this island, you will be blown away by the natural beauty of its tall majestic hills, stunning cliff faces and white sand beaches. The hundreds of sheep that roam freely all around the island also give it a very authentically Irish feel. As I said, we did return to Kimbe in the morning for our last stop in Akil, and it was, of course, well worth a visit. This place has recently been voted as one of the best beaches in the world, and it's easy to see why. This is Kim Beach, and behind me is the house of uh, Brendan Gleeson in the movie. So at Kim Beach, the starting point of the hike to Croan Cliffs is here. But today, as you can see, the top of the cliffs will be covered in clouds, so there's no point in doing it. But uh, on a clear day, I'd say it's really worth it. Atlantic Drive was such a great place to finish our tour of Akil Island, which has become one of our favorite places in the whole of Ireland. We still have a few more places to get to on this three-day itinerary, and to get to the idyllic Silver Strand Beach in southwestern Mayo, you will need to be well adjusted to driving on these narrow country roads. So we were driving on those country roads, and we said, oh, it's the middle of nowhere, there are going to be no people, but as you can see, there are quite a few people, and I guess it's worth it, so let's see. The wind was something else here, so we didn't stay for too long, but it really is a beautiful setting. The narrow country roads continued until we reached the picturesque lakes of Dulo Valley. We went on a little hike into some fields to get a better angle of the valley and in all honesty the wind was pretty strong, but it didn't take away from the beauty of this area. We were delighted we went off the beaten path to get here. Eventually, we made our way to our last destination on our mail trip and now it was time to let our hair down after all that sightseeing. You may have noticed that our shiny new suitcases featured a bit in the first part of the video and that is because we think they are just too sleek not to share. 
We are probably in the minority of travelers who actually prefer taking suitcases rather than backpacks. We know that's a bit controversial as 99% of people we meet traveling always have their big bulky backpacks with them instead. Our problem was that for our recent trip through South and Central America, we didn't invest in good quality luggage and therefore after seven months of hauling our cases around, they just about managed to make it through the trip in one piece. But things are going to be different from now on because we have finally gotten some luxury, high quality luggage from a New York based company called Level 8 Luggage. For the shorter trips, like a three day trip to Mayo that we don't need to check in our luggage for, this mini oh so sleek aluminium suitcase is not only the prettiest suitcase we have ever seen, it is also incredibly practical and durable. As for our checked luggage, we can't get over how smoothly this gorgeous 28 inch luminous suitcase glides over rough surfaces with ease, and our 28 inch Voyager suitcase is specially designed for durability with its wide trolley design. Both of these suitcases are extremely spacious on the inside and allow you to organize your belongings with their handy compartments. Level 8 have a variety of styles and designs to suit every type of traveler. Just look at this little carry-on piece with a built-in compartment to keep your laptop, tablet and other valuables safe. If you feel like you need an upgrade on your current luggage, head over to the Level 8 website by clicking the link in the description and use the promo code something to remember 10 for 10% off. We arrived in Westport quite hungry and decided to have dinner in a bar called MJ Hoban's. You can't really go too far wrong with the bar food in Ireland and we suggest going for the battered fish and chips here. Westport itself is a scenic town that is hugely popular among both locals and tourists alike. We heard it described as a mini Galway which suited us down to the ground as Galway is definitely one of our favorite places. It is also a great starting point if you want to climb Crowpatrick Mount. We would imagine coming to Westport to climb Crowpatrick and then going for a few creamy pints in the town after Afterwards, sounds like a pretty nice couple of days. Speaking of pints, we're off to try what the Guinness Guru recommends as being the best pint of Guinness in Westport. Um, if you've tried Guinness abroad and you didn't really like it, you still have to come to Ireland and try it. And if there's something really wrong with you that you don't like it here, then Asya will tell you what you should drink instead. Even though uh, Guinness didn't really grow on me, I really like Irish cider, and this is Rockshore, my favorite. I always like bombers, but I prefer bombers in cans and Rockshore on roofs. So if you come here, try it out. The Guinness here did not disappoint, and we found a live music session in a pub called The Porter House, which kept us going for the night. We found this nice Airbnb about a 10 or 15 minute walk from Westport city centre and it's a really nice place with a nice view of Crowpatrick here and it was just 58 euro for the night so I think it's really reasonable. So that is it about Mayo. In our next video we will explore Kerry's wild Atlantic coast so make sure to subscribe to the channel. Meanwhile if you enjoyed this video don't forget to leave a like and if you go to Mayo we are sure you're going to have something to remember just like us. <laughs>